Okay, so how to find 50,000 maps in a haystack of a million images, geolocate them and categorize them without a budget. Um, it's about 12 months, just over a year, since the British Library released a million images to Flickr. These weren't the crown jewels of the British Library collection. These were very much found images. What happened was about five years ago, they had 60,000 books scanned by Microsoft. Microsoft decided it didn't want the scans anymore. It wasn't going to create Microsoft books. They gave it back to the British Library. The British Library didn't know what to do with it. But about um, 18 months ago, a British Library lab scheme started. Um, they wanted some pictures to work on, some 19th century pictures. There were all sorts of illustrations in these 60,000 books, so they just collected up everything that the OCR machine said, this isn't text, and had these interesting images. And the more they looked at them, the more they thought they were interesting, and they'd like to share them with everybody else. So they eventually put a million of them on Flickr. Now, this isn't really the story of those images. If you want to know more about British Library Labs and the Mechanical Curator Collection, then there's a link on the Etherpad. But coming to at it from a, from a Wikimedian's point of view, it's this great resource. These are largely travel, ethnography, geography, some history books from different parts of the world. These are Victorian page illustrations, mostly. We've got articles. We're looking for illustrations from them. Actually, a lot of that stuff is usable and interesting for us just in Wiki, Wikimedia, Wikipedia, as well as all the other sorts of uses that it could have. So it's a fantastic resource. But on the other hand, there's very, very limited metadata with it. Um, essentially, all you have, because of how it was created, all you have for an image is the in information about the book. You know the book author, publisher, when it was published, title, and that's it. So there's nothing in the million images at the level of the image to tell you what it is at all. So as a result, when Commons was offered a bulk upload of all million images, Commons thought about it for not very long and said, ah, no, that's not what Commons does. We don't take bulk uploads of stuff if there's no discoverability, if there's no organization, if there's no categorization. If you can find structure on that in those images that will let people actually find things in them, then come back to us. But we don't want to have a million random images that we don't know anything about. But that's not the end of the story because Wikipedia and volunteers are resourceful. So OK, let's start creating that structure. So the first thing you can do is to generate your own. So we've got the names of the books. So let's start organizing those into a subject index. Let's start seeing so it's different parts of the world that the books are about. Let's start organizing what are the titles by different parts of the world. Let's start. Um, so then if somebody does want to start seeing in these million images, is there anything interesting about Turkey? Is there anything interesting about um, Israel and Palestine? Is there anything interesting about the, the Netherlands? Then at least if you can start at the subject in, index, then, then you can start to find things. So this was handmade. It got um, then, then an understanding of how the British Library's 19th century class mark system worked. So then you could auto, automate the index and make a bit more of an index. So it's a hodgepodge of different index pages. But even if it's a hodgepodge in an index that we've built ourselves, it's useful. And the demonstration of that is that we now have 20,000 images on commons from this collection rising of images that have been uploaded for an entire book. Um, and all sorts of stuff, and those have been properly put on commons, by an ex mostly by an extremely dedicated German user um, who has done proper file pages for each of the images, what it is, linked through to anything he can link through, proper hand categorization. But as any of you who've done big uploads probably know, I mean, the, there's, um, the, the real brute in the upload process isn't the uploading, it's the categorization. Um, very, very, very time consuming. 
um, to, to manually categorize them. I, mean, I, I, did, I started on three or four books, books middle of last year. I haven't finished them yet with a couple of hundred images. Um, because, so there had to be a better way. Could we get lots of these images um, out of the collection in some more automatic process that would give us the discoverability? Were there any sorts of images that maybe the categorization could be easier for? And one particular group is map images. Because if you've got the coordinates of a map, if you know where the map on the globe is, what it represents, then you've got a very natural classification. So it should be possible to automate. And so it can then be, we can then organize them, categorize them, get them onto commons. And there's actually quite useful stuff there, maps at all sorts of scales. So this then became an interesting project. Could we extract a million images? Could we find largely travel and geography books? Could we extract all the maps in those books? First, work out which of those million images were maps, and then start getting them, start saying where they were maps of, and get them onto commons. So the first stage, that the books are all on Flickr, so that's good, we can use Flickr to keep track of what the things are, using Flickr to tag them. So just to, if it was a map in the book, in the image, give it a map tag on Flickr and, and tag them. But an advantage of the Wikipedia, of doing it through Wiki, and the indexes we'd already built, was we could then use those indexes to drive the process. So here's the index, like the index you saw before. This is how it was on Halloween last year when we started the tagging project. And you can see that it's acquired each of the, um, I don't know if there's, no, I don't have a, a mouse pointer here. But you can see each of these pink templates have been added, one per book, to say, were there any untagged maps in the book? And those are links that go through to all the images for that book on Flickr. And we were asking people, follow the link, go to the images on Flickr, identify which ones were maps, tag them as maps, once they're tagged, they will disappear from the Flickr search because the Flickr search is looking for all the images from a particular book that don't have a map tag. When you've finished a book, this is just wiki text, so remove the template, um, and that way we can systematically work through the list without duplicating our effort and whittle down until there are no more books left that might have maps in them that aren't tagged because we looked at them all. So here's a time lapse of what happened next. Starting, we started with an open workshop at the British Library on Halloween, um, which was great. And you can already start to see pink tags disappearing. As we roll on, by the end of Halloween, it's already, they're disappearing. Four days later, and you've got down to a few left. 17th of December, and by the 19th of December, this whole page had been, this whole section had been done. Um, similarly, that there were a lot of, by dividing it up into different index pages for the collection, it wasn't just 60,000 books. Because they're split up, then you can have different, the different index pages made it bite size, that people could concentrate on pages of books from a particular area they were interested in. So it meant that people had control of where they went to. They could take a bit of the project and own it and clear that and say, I've taken all of the books for the provincial areas of France that were on your index page. I've worked through them. There are none left. So here again is the time lapse from the, the overall index um, starting October the 31st. And you can see by, they'd already, in day one, we got through 10% of the books. Um, a quarter of them done in the first three days. Um, you can see already by this stage, 5,000 maps tags have been added. And actually, we didn't even know how many maps to expect. You can see, see the headline at the top, help find 10,000 old maps in the British Library's online Flickr stream. Um, well, by November the 7th, we'd already got up to 8,000, 
and we'd only done 40% of the collection. By November 14th, we'd had to change the headline to find 20,000 maps. Um, December the 1st, December the 10th, 25,000. Um, December the 17th, well, we'll just leave it like this till we know how many we've got. Um, finally, we'd found very nearly 30,000 old maps in this manual process. At the same time, a really clever German guy who goes under the, the Twitter nick of Quasimondo had written his own pattern recognition system. He'd already, just before we'd started, tagged 20,000 maps just himself um, with this automated system. In fact, the British Library get, got quite nervous, saying, he's taken 20,000. You thought there were only 10,000. Is it still worth running this project? Are there any left? Well, it turned out there were, in fact, we'd found nearly 50,000 maps in all in this tagging process done in eight weeks. So we've got a rough idea by the end of December as to how many maps there were and by subject of the book, what sort of parts of the world they were about. But we want to actually do better than that because we want to say precisely this is a map of France or this is a map of Paris or this is a plan of Notre Dame Cathedral. So the next stage, I don't know how many of you were in Susanna's session on day one, Susanna on us, and the, talking about georeferencing and whether you've got a, to have a play with the georeference of its com on commons. Um, for historical reasons, the British Library had actually done quite a lot of georeferencing already with um, a commercial su supplier called Clocan. Um, so this is the, the idea of georeferencing here. You've got a map on the left, which is one of our old maps, a map on the right, which is a modern map, and you're essentially putting a pin in the old map and a corresponding pin in the new map. And once you've got enough, then that you can, once you've got more than five, you can take the old map and um, lay it onto, this is actually a different map, obviously, this is no longer, um, lay it and, but because you've identified enough points, you can then lay it on the, the top of the new one. And I think they say with crowdsourcing things that what people, keeps people going is little rewards that then make you want to have a bit more and a bit more. And this is how the addiction works. So this is where you get the little buzz of satisfaction that, yes, I've put in the points, and it's almost fitting. And yes, I'm going to put in three or four more points. And ah, yes, I'm happy with that the way that fits now. I feel satisfied, but I want to do another one. And it's quite quick. And so it actually works really quite, quite well. So in a pilot phase, um, we'd done 3,000 and um, of the first ones that had been identified. So through the georeferencing, you know where on a map of the world these maps are. But also because you're getting all the information, you're really getting a precise idea of what this map or plan is of. Um, you're getting the scale of it as well. So we know that these are the, the scale factors that OpenStreetMap uses. So each bar on this histogram is a factor of two scaling. So a map of a country of the whole world is scale one, a map of France scale five, a map of Paris scale 12, a map of, uh, of a medium-sized cathedral scale 18. Um, so you've got the location and you've got the scale, and that's enough to really start identifying what those images are in a programmatic way. So for instance, you know the locate it's a scale the size of a continent, and it's sort of where Europe is. You can then tag all of those up on Flickr, and this is actually a real Flickr search coming back with all the ones that look like maps of Europe in that um, 3,000 pilot images. Um, that's so you can identify continents or individual countries or nations, parts of countries, or individual cities. This one's Glasgow. Or going down, this is the various scales of different maps of Edinburgh and plans of Edinburgh, but you could pick out features of a particular size. So with the georeferencing, that gives you lots of 
to the precise categorizations, to the precise groupings anyway, that are now ready to be lo loaded to commons. So we started with a million images. We didn't know what they were. We didn't know anything that there was. We've identified 50,000 of them as being maps. And now through the georeferencing, we're identifying what those maps are of. Ready to be uploaded to commons? Well, if I'm being honest, almost. Because there is still a to-do list. Um, those were the Flickr searches, but really before I'm... I think somebody was talking, giving a tutorial on uploading, and they did say, try and get it right first before you do the upload, because it's much easier to correct things before you do it than to try and correct it once it's already on Wiki. So on my to-do list, and this is actually an open thing because there are people in this room that will know how to solve these problems better than I will. So in the next couple of slides, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for this to-do list. But I'm sure there are people here who can say, actually, no, there's a much better way to do that. If you did it this or used that data source. So please do, if there's not time for questions, then talk to me afterwards, because I want your brains. Um, <laughs> but better improving on those subject recognitions before I actually commit to comments. And also, it's not exactly straightforward, even if you know what a map is of, and you've identified the subject, to think, what is the actual commons categorization that this should go into? So how are we doing the sub On the ones I showed you, how am I doing the subject identification? Currently using OpenStreetMap's nominating system, which will give you a really precise idea of what something is for a particular point. It's not so good on big regions, but so if I've got seeing what the center point of my map is, and then four points, 40% of the way towards each of the corners. That seems to quite work quite well. If, to the open street map nominating will give me various levels of address. And if I keep all the ones where I get four votes out of five agreeing, and then throw away the more detailed bits, that kind of gives me a good idea what the map is of, usable enough. And, and also, it, because it's open street map, it tells me it's labeled what that level of the address actually, actually is. So that's working quite well, um, but there are exceptions. For small features, it's not very good because Nominatum came out of a, street, of a street address system. So if you give it a cathedral, it's liable to tell you that the th it's, a, it's a map of the street next door to the cathedral rather than the cathedral itself. So. But we have a thing for, that, that's very good for that. So an obvious thing for small features will be to look up the coordinates on Wikidata. And then Wikidata ought to be able to say, well, actually, there's a feature that's not just a street. There's a feature that's worth having a Wikidata item very close to here. So um, out of the returns nearby to the, co is to the point on Wikidata, I'll, I'll be looking for cathedrals or things that people would want to make a Victorian plan of and think, it's probably that. For larger um, features, a problem I've got at the moment is with countries like Italy. Now, remember, my votes were four out of five, and it's in. Well, I'm not sure if these five, any of them, actually hit the land of Italy. Maybe the corner of, Swit of, of Sicily there, but I'm getting an awful lot of C, and so for, for some counties, it's what I'm doing at the moment is rather overcautious. You think you should be getting a county, but it's telling you a region of a country. You think you should be getting a country, and it's telling me, well, it's a map of somewhere in Europe, because that's... So, so the, the, the identification I've got at the moment is not quite good enough, but I think we can do better than that by um, probably the best way to... Maybe other people have better suggestions, but it's probably the thing to do is just look what maps we already have in Wikipedia. So we've got locator maps of Italy. I know how big that is, because um, it's a locator map. So um, there's a source of data that I can then compare. Is my map roughly, the thing might be of Italy. Is the map the same size and roughly the same place as the map of Italy? OK, I'll settle with that. I mean, it, it ought to be that it should be possible to pull this out of Wikidata. One day it will be, because Wikidata has a property for the most extreme north, south, east, and west point of a country. But like a lot of Wikidata, this will be really good when the property is populated. 
but for most items on, on Wikidata that could have that property, the information isn't actually there yet. And even if it was there, suppose you've got Spain. What's the most southerly point of Spain? Is it the southern point of mainland Spain, or do you include the, the exclaves that you've got in Africa? Is the most southern point of the United Kingdom the Falkland Islands, or South Georgia, or the South Pole Base? So until Wikidata's got more, more, decided more how it wants that property to work, um, it's one of the things where Wikidata will be wonderful, but it needs people to get the data in and to think about it and the community to form to actually start loading it in and coming up with results. So for the moment, for subject identification, for large features, probably to identify existing maps and see where they are. Um, for commons, ah, okay. Categorization, um, I mean, anyone who has dealt with commons, so some, some may be from a GLAM background rather than from a wiki background and may not have had the full horror of commons yet. Commons is great for humans, the categorization, but it's a lot less good for machines to try and work where, where something should be with wildly different categorization depths and naming. So it's, uh, there are routine upload categories that we'll create, and that's easy enough to slot things into. But supposing I'm categorizing a country, well, country level is reasonably good for maps. Old maps of country is a fairly good category tree. But once I get to cities, do I want it to be an old maps of the city? Or does the city not have a category for old maps? So should it go into a, a group category for old maps of cities in the whole country? Or should it go for a slightly more specific category because somebody's broken that category down into old maps of cities in part of the country? And then if it's gone into that one, should it then also go into the category for the city itself? Um, and similarly for features, should it go into a category for plans of churches in the Netherlands? Or should it go for plans of churches in The Hague? Or plans of a particular church or that particular church itself. So I'm going to be trying to get, get a handle onto this into the next few weeks, but I've got a little bit of work to do. Um, it should be doable, though. Um, and Wikidata will help for telling me if I look something up and I want to know what it is. Wikidata will often be able to tell me, yes, this thing is a church. It's a cathedral. It's whatever, because... If I'm looking up the, the coordinates and Wikidata is giving me a, a, a Q number and then telling me what the Q number is. Um, so that should all be possible. So it should be reasonably doable with a bit of time to automatically get the things updated. So meanwhile, where are things at at the moment? As of two weeks ago, georeferencing is underway. So whereas before there were pink templates saying there are maps here that may not have been tagged, now on those index pages, there are purple templates saying there are maps from this book that could use georeferencing. Um, and I'm hoping that this will disappear as well as the earlier ones we saw. There's also the overall progress page. And so if one now wants to look at all of the maps we've got from books we think are on topics about, with subjects on France, um, then one can find the 2,686 maps we think have come, or plans or whatever have come from things about France. So somebody can pick a particular area they're interested in, choose the maps on that, go and georeference those. Um, so this is live. The link's plugged in as of two days ago um, to, to be able to choose your own map. The British Library volunteers just working with a random map have already done 2,000 images in the last two weeks. So that's 4% of the collection done in the first two weeks, but really need help and people here to come and give it a go because actually it's quite fun. Um, but, and it, the more people, it only takes a few <coughs> minutes for a map and then that's one off the list. That's something that will be going up automatically into Wikicommons in the next few weeks. Um, so, broad conclusions, I think that the tiered levels of wiki pages that we've used here leading to image searches, people often ask, how do you scale crowdsourcing 
to big problems. I think this is something we had a large problem. A million images is a large problem. This worked. 50,000 maps, I'm hoping it will work again. Um, even ad hoc rough indexes and discovery aids are useful. People often say, oh, we can't release our index, it's not perfect. But as Wikipedians, we're used to starting with nothing, with the stone soup that Asaf was talking about, um, then building up from that a few carrots here, a few um, entries in the index there. And it, even if it's not perfect, it's usable, and then it can be reused for all sorts of different things. So build up the information. Commons itself has about 60,000 old maps. So if this process will work for this group of 50,000, there's no reason why a similar drive to georeference all of Commons' maps shouldn't be the very next stage. And if you went to Susanna's talk on Friday, you'll have seen how once you've got the georeferencing of the coordinates of a map, that opens the door to being able to do all sorts of different things with it and to use it in all sorts of different parts of the process. But the real message I want to get over today is that georeferencing is fun, so come and give it a try. Um, thank you very much.